to their amazement A young man sat before them Do not be afraid For Jesus Who has been crucified Here you will not find He has risen from the Good morning. Welcome, everyone. We are here to gather before Jesus and his presence. It is the fourth Sunday in Easter, I think, of my third Sunday of Easter. <laughs> so I'm going to say Christ is risen, and then... He is risen indeed. Yeah, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Yeah, amen. Well, why don't you, uh, if, if you'd like, stand with us and... Um... God is able.
Thank you that there remains a Sabbath rest for us, for all of your people. Thank you that you promise your shalom is coming and that we can, we can experience a part of that as we celebrate Sabbath or as we, as we rest in your presence and worship you together. We look forward to the day when the earth will be filled with the glorious rest that only comes from knowing you. Jesus, we pray for your family around the world today as they gather to worship and hear your word. We remember those who, from our community and all over, because of illness or because of isolation or political intimidation or conflict, who are unable to meet with others to worship. God, would you be with them, especially by your spirit this day. Father, we pray for pastors and priests leading your people all over the world preaching your gospel. May they follow in your footsteps, loving sacrificially, preaching boldly and laying down their lives for the flock. 
Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence with us. Spirit of Jesus, would you revive us today? Surprise us with your power and your presence as we gather. Would you speak to us? Would you meet each one of us where we need you? Heal the sick. Speak words of faith and comfort. Bind up broken hearts. Grant us repentance. Pour out your gifts of grace and renew in us an all-consuming passion for Jesus. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to have a seat. And we're going to hear some scripture. Act 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, What is so surprising about this? And why stare at us through we have made this man walk by our own pow power or godliness? For it is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same realize him. This is you reject this holy righteous one and instead demand the release of a murder. You killed the author of life but God raised him from the dead and we are witness of this fact. Through faith in Jesus, in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name, he has healed him bef before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets and foretold about Messiah, that he suffered these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously, because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God, and that's the, only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him, and in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. All who indulge in sinful life are dangerously lawless, for sin is a major disruption of God's order. Surely you know that Christ showed up in order to get rid of sin. There is no sin in him, and sin is not part of his program. No one who lives deeply in Christ makes a practice of sin. None of those who do practice sin have taken a good look at Christ. They've got him all backward. So, my dear children, don't let anything divert you from the truth. It's the person who acts right who is right, just as we see it lived out in our righteous Messiah. Be working? Oh yeah, it is. So how is everybody today? Everybody's, you know, moving, eyes blinking. <laughs> a 
awake in, or here. <laughs> this morning, today, through the power of the Holy Spirit, by Scripture, the Holy Spirit wants to interact with our very real lives. Do you believe that to be true? That the Holy Spirit, through Scripture, wants to interact with your actual life? Yes? And so, in this good news today, we are going to talk about feelings. <laughs> I hear laughter, <laughs> feelings. Oh, yeah, and junior church. We're also talking about junior church. So there is the junior disciples and also Sparkling Lions uh, gathering downstairs. You see Noreen heading out, and Arthur is on his way. And Yama. Okay, Sparkling Lions with Yama. So have a wonderful time. Enjoy yourselves while we talk about feelings. Do you remember? Uh, it was from 1975, so only certain people in the room will know the song, Feelings, whoa, 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 feelings. Anybody remember? <laughs> we are going to talk about feelings. So, question uh, for you today is, how many emotions do you think you have experienced just today since you woke up? Can you, can you name, just name a few emotions that maybe you've experienced since you woke up this morning? Just throw them out there. Tired? <laughs> Anything else? Frustration. Yes. Excitement. Worry. Worry, yeah. What else? Happy. Okay. Say that again. Bafflement. Yes. What a good one. I'm going to guess that we have all experienced multiple emotions just since we woke up this morning. And uh, maybe a little bit of the harder question. <clears throat> Is it working? Okay. So if you, if Caleb, if you want to, you could just hand it to me or you could just guess. Okay, got it. You'll just do it. Great. Thanks, buddy. A uh, little bit harder question, perhaps. Um, do you have categories? Do you have labels for your emotions? Which of these ones are good and which are bad? Could you go through and, tell, and say... Yeah, most of us are able to do that, <laughs> interestingly enough. Um, it's very easy, it's very human that we tend to categorize our feelings, that we categorize our reactions. These are good and these are bad. And so today we're going to look on this third Sunday of Easter, we're going to look again at part of the resurrection story and um, it is a story in which many experienced, uh, uh, very, very many emotions are experienced in this story. So, um, uh, Luke is going to tell us about how Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection. All right? Now, this is going to be your job as we go through the story. As you hear an emotion being expressed in the story, you're going to throw up an arm. Okay, now everybody's a little sleepy this morning, so I'm hoping you can handle this. If, the, if you think the emotion that's being mentioned is positive, you're going to throw up your right arm. Everybody know what your right arm is. <laughs> Put it up in the air just to, you know, practice this out. If you feel that that emotion that's being, ex is, if you feel that it's positive, you're going to put up your right arm. Guess what? If you think that the emotion being expressed or talked about is negative or bad, you're going to put up your left hand. Let's just practice. Positive. 
negative. Okay, you're, you're in, I kind of feel like we need to do a very short little practice uh, just to give it a, a try. So here's a sentence that I'm going to read, and you are going to go right arm if you feel that it's a positive emotion, and a left arm if you feel that it's negative. Ready? The rabbit excitedly nibbled through the cabbage as the hedgehog cowered in the corner and worried that he may never be happy again. Okay, I feel like we better do the sentence one more time. <laughs> this, like, really random. Okay, there are no right answers, just so you know. Like, there's no time that, that the right arm or left arm, you you are allowed to choose, okay? Ready? The rabbit excitedly nibbled through the cabbage as the hedgehog cowered in the corner and worried that he may never be happy again. Okay, I feel like there's just a little more confidence this time around. So, that's great. Okay, so, here we go. We're going to enter into this story that's told to us by Luke. This is in Luke chapter 24, the disciples are gathered in a locked room. All right? Here we go. Arms ready? While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And then, uh, and when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy... They were disbelieving and still wondering. He said, to, <laughs> uh, he said to them, have you anything to eat? That's pause. <laughs> I'm about to make a comment about that. <laughs> uh, they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Okay, so... There were quite a few emotions. Anybody, like, need to stretch now? Kind of had a good little workout. You didn't know you were getting aerobics today. I think it is quite perfect that Jesus, in the middle of all this intense emotion, he uh, just comes out and says, do you have anything here to eat? (laughs) It sounds to me like my teenage boys in my home every single day. Is there anything to eat? You got anything to eat? Is there something to eat? (laughs) This is kind of part of life. It's It's the everyday life. And so in a way, Jesus is not only showing the disciples that he really is truly there, that he's eating food. He's not a ghost. He's eating this fish. He is also normalizing the intense emotions that they're feeling. Jesus expects that you will feel, in the normal flow of your life, doubt and fright and joy and disbelief and wonder and startle and terror and peace. This is to be expected. You are going to feel it all and... It is also very likely that you will feel multiple things at once. (laughs) Did anybody notice that sentence? While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Talk about the complexities of our life. Have you ever felt joy and wondering or uh, doubt? and excited at the same time it is 
it is part of our humanity. It's part of how God has made us. And so Jesus acknowledges this complexity and he asks for something to eat. And then what Jesus does next is so beautiful. Jesus, in such a gracious way, he acknowledges the complexities of life and, and our emotions. And then he invites the disciples into the bigger picture. Jesus invites them into the big story. The big story of God. Jesus says to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to the scriptures, to understand the scriptures. So just take that in for a minute. Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Can I remind us today that as awesome as the Bible is and how wonderful and astounding it is to have God's word available to us, it cannot make a scrap of sense to us without the Spirit of God opening our hearts and minds. Scripture interacts with our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible cannot make an impact on our lives or on us without the power of God. And so here, Jesus so clearly makes this happen. And Luke recognizes it. He, he, he felt it in, um, in, as the disciples told him about this experience, that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to, be, is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the bigger picture, the big story, the story of God, that God is up to something amazingly good. Even on my worst day, even in the middle of my meltdown or in the middle of my rage and frustration, in the middle of my grief, in the middle of my heart-stopping fear, God is still up to something amazingly good. Can we believe this to be true? One of the scripture readings this morning that we heard from Courtney and Charlotte is from John's, uh, John is one of the disciples of Jesus, and it's from his first little mini letter, 1 John chapter 3. John paints the big picture, God's big picture for us in very personal terms. He says, what marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called the children of God. That's who we really are. In this moment, I may be experiencing terrible anxiety. I may um, be experiencing something extremely uncomfortable. And I need to attend to that anxiety. It is not to be ignored. I need to pay attention to it because in the big picture, I am dearly loved. I am a dearly loved child of God. I belong to God, and God is good. And so this is the most real thing at this moment, even in the middle of my anxiety, the most real thing is that I am a dearly loved child of God, and that is who I really am. So John keeps on going. He says, that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. Because it has no idea who he is or what God is up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up. What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him. And in seeing him, become like him. 
All of us who look forward to the, his coming stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. The bigger picture, God's big story, holds an incredible promise that we will become like Jesus. That we are considered Jesus' brothers and sisters. That this is who we are and that there will be a strong family resemblance. We are God's beloved children. <clears throat> John keeps on going. He says, all who indulge in a sinful life are dangerously lawless, for sin is a major disruption to God's order. Surely you know that Christ showed up in order to get rid of sin. There is no sin in him, and sin is not part of his program. No one who lives deeply in Christ makes a practice of sin. None of those who do practice sin have taken a good look at Christ. They've got him all backwards. So, my dear children, don't let anyone divert you from the truth. It's the person who acts right who is right, just as we see it lived out in our righteous Messiah. So, speaking of sin, that John kind of... Uh, you know, lays it out in this letter of his. What would you say are some of the strong emotions that are often connected to sin? In your mind, in your experience, what are the strong emotions that tend to be connected to sin? Just name some of them. What do you experience? Anger, guilt, what else? Frustration. Oh, jealousy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hatred. Yes. Doubt. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. So, these strong emotions... There is a reason that we often tend to uh, label them as good or bad. So I have a little bit more, uh, like, more detailed question for you. If something makes you feel angry, are you sinning by feeling angry? Yay or nay? Right hand are you sinning when you're angry? Right hand is yes, left hand is no. Oh. <laughs> Again, right, left. I'm making it too complicated. It's still too early in the morning. Do you remember the story um, uh, of Jesus clearing the temple out because... He was angry about how the space was being used. In kind of John's words, do you think that you can live deeply in Christ and still experience anger? Yes or no? Yes. So I'm going to invite us to say this out loud together. All right. Emotions are God-given information messages. All right, ready? Emotions are God-given information messages. Emotions are important information for us to receive. There is a reason that God created us with the ability to experience emotion. And it is not you know, for us to hate the bad and enjoy the good. It is important information for us. One of my seminary professors taught a lot about anger. He wrote books about anger. He talks about how anger is an important message to us. It is 
telling us that something we value strongly is being crossed or something is being thwarted, is being stopped. Something that we value deeply. So Jesus cared deeply that the people who traveled to the temple could pray and could have access to God. This, this is something Jesus valued so deeply. And so the market that was taking place in the worship space and the price gouging of the sellers and the money changers that they were doing to the people who wanted to access God, this made Jesus feel a lot of anger. And this was important information for Jesus. It was a cue, it was a clue that something is wrong. Something is not okay. Jesus even took action on his anger. And he did it in line with his values. Jesus' anger was not sin. Now, it is true that what we do with our anger can often lead to sin. And we've all experienced this. So Psalm 4 says, has this little sentence in there. And it says, don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Isn't that interesting how that's worded? Don't sin by letting anger control you. Feeling anger is not sinful. Your job as a Christ follower is not to avoid feeling angry or to get rid of feeling angry. Sin and anger are connected when anger takes control. When anger is what controls your decisions, what controls your actions. So um, I'll give a little pro tip, not only from personal experience, for all of us who work very hard at not feeling angry, you know, as soon as we feel angry, we try to find anything else, or <laughs> uh, we try to get rid of that feeling. Um, anger can more effectively take control of you when you are trying to ignore it or deny it. I'm not angry. I'm fine. I'm over that. Anger has more control when we deny it or we ignore it. The same is true of fear. <laughs> I'm feeling anxiety. I'm feeling worried. But when I, when I ignore that or try to avoid that I'm feeling anxiety about something, that's when it starts to take control. Isn't that interesting? So, John writes in his letter, he says, sin is a major disruption of God's order. What is that about? Sin disrupts God's big picture. Sin has a, a disruptive effect. Sin goes against God's big story, God's big picture. Now, I'm just going to review, we're just going to jump back to review for one second. What then is God's big picture? What's most true in this moment? Do you remember? It has to do with who you are. We are dearly beloved children of God. This is the big picture. Sin gets disruptive in this reality that we are God's children. Sin has a way of disrupting our belief and our resting in the reality that we are the children of God, that we are dearly loved, that we belong to God. This is what's disruptive. But this is the good news that we um, receive today, that sin cannot stop the big story. Sin cannot stop the bigger picture of God. 
when um, Charlotte read from Acts this morning. The, the screen said it was from John 20. It was from Acts. Peter is talking about how this man who, who had been unable to walk since birth, he was healed in front of all these people, and he's addressing the people because of their uh, incredible surprise. Faith in Jesus healed him. And he says, Jesus can heal much more than this. <laughs> Jesus can heal every sin. Jesus can heal every result of sin. Jesus can bring healing for every mistake, for every failure, every error. God's power can heal it all. Sin cannot stop God's story. In fact, Peter says, you killed the author of life. And if anything, you would think that that would stop the story, right? But what did God do? God raised him from the dead. Sin cannot stop the story of God. Even death does not have the final say when it comes to Jesus' power. This is the movement of God's big picture, God's story, that Jesus heals and Jesus redeems and Jesus brings hope and Jesus brings peace. This is what it's all about. Jesus brings healing and redemption and hope and peace because we are his beloved children. This is the big picture. C.S. Lewis writes um, in his book, Surprised by Joy. Has anyone ever read that book? C.S. Lewis, Surprised by Joy. He spends quite a bit of time talking about emotion. And he says, he describes the emotion of joy, obviously. He deals with joy quite a bit. And he talks about it um, in contrast to pleasure or what's pleasant. And he describes joy as pointing towards what is most deeply true. He says it this way, all joy reminds. It points. <laughs> it is never a possession. It's always a desire for something, a further away, still about to be. Because joy is always pointing us towards the big picture. Joy points us back again to the big story of God, that we, in ultimate reality, are God's beloved children, loved, cared for. And so when we're receiving information messages that our emotions uh, are created to be, we are actually more able to enter more fully into God's big story. What if we let our emotions what if we let this information that our emotions give us, what if we let it, uh, let those emotions point us back again to the bigger story, to God's bigger truth? We process our frustration. We respond to our guilt. We pay attention to our fears. We listen to our joy. We notice our calm. These things are not outside of our life with Christ, you know. They're not outside of the reality that we're Christians. No, these are actually crucial parts of our life with Christ. That Jesus is actually right here in the midst of our emotion, whether we notice or not. Those disciples are all talking with each other, and suddenly Jesus is standing right there in the midst of it. And what does he say to them? Peace be with you. Jesus is present in the middle of every one of our emotions. Always. So I want to invite us into um, a corporate prayer a together prayer experience. And we are going to use Psalm 4, the psalm uh, in the lectionary for today. It's a psalm that King David wrote about 
30 centuries ago. So if you ever think that your emotions are uh, unique or, you know, no one has ever felt this before, <laughs> rest assured, 30 centuries ago, yeah, these emotions were still, these were still true. They're, these were happening then. And King David kind of assures us of that through many of the Psalms. We see the emotional life that's actually then in incorporated into uh, life with God. The emotions are not separate from, from walking with God. They are actually incorporated. So I want to invite you, um, take a comfortable position that's helpful for you. And it might be that holding your hands um, up on your, on your lap, palms up, if that's helpful to you. Or maybe there's a way that you can just take a, a few breaths that help you become aware of both yourself and what you're experiencing today and also that helps you pay attention to God, to God's current presence with you. So there's going to be out loud parts whenever the psalm is on the screen. We're going to, we're just going to say it out loud together. And it might be that some parts of this psalm you read with a loud voice. And there might be other ones that feel a little more like a whisper. That's okay. There's also then going to be um, some space for silence in between some of these sections of the psalm. And in those silences, there will be just a little prompt for your prayer, for your conversation with God this morning. So, are you ready? Let's pray together. Answer me when I call to you, O God who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. I invite you to uh, now in the silence consider what emotions are you bringing with you today into prayer. Do not leave your emotions at the door. They actually come with you. And Jesus expects them to come with you. Your emotions have important messages for you today. So along with all the emotion you might be experiencing, ask for God's help, for God's answers, for God's mercy. going to continue. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? So in the silence, what false beliefs or unhelpful assumptions about emotions about God are hounding and accusing you today.
invite you now to hear this assurance of God's bigger picture. Together, you can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. And so, in response to this truth, let's affirm it with applause. next one. Don't let sin, don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Perhaps a New Testament version of this prayer instead of offer sacrifices might be offer to God all the realities of your whole life and trust the Lord. Or, I'm not reading the right part, sorry. What emotions today are taking control of you? Particularly through denial or ignoring. What do you notice? Spend some silence around that. part of the psalm offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord let's say this together offer to God all the realities of your whole life and trust the Lord the next section many people say who will show us better times let your face smile on us, Lord. Lord, show us glimpses of your bigger picture, that we are your beloved children who you take good care of. You, you have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. Spend a moment now to notice the greater joy, the peace be with you of Jesus that's bigger than the circumstances of your life. closing. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. And let's, let's sing in response.
darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy. lost its sting. And no, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world, Part of our life with Christ is this uh, living into God's bigger picture in every part, uh, every facet of our being. And so even as you consider what it looks like uh, to be giving of yourself, to be giving of your finance, giving out of your time, out of your energy, May it be something that directs you and leads you back or actually places you inside God's bigger picture, your belovedness as a child of God. We are um, partway through, probably about halfway through, our Hidden in My Heart journey. Uh, this is uh, our memory verse um, Kind of program, and so just wanting to remind uh, parents in particular, the kids uh, remind you to place those verses before your kids as they um, are able 
and maybe there is even just one verse that becomes uh, a common uh, repeated phrase in your home um, in these days, letting the, the Spirit use it. And uh, you know the listeners. Um, I don't think, oh, there they are. So Paul and Laura, Norma, Shar, uh, give them a call or send them a little voice recording, uh, but sending your verses in. Um, you've been hearing a little bit of buzz about May 4th. So this is a Saturday coming up. Um, the first Saturday of May, we are going to be the proud hosts of our regional um, Canada Covenant gathering. We'll be um, having all of the Saskatchewan churches join us here. for one, It's like a one-day conference. And the reason that, that we're doing this, the reason that our the, the larger movement is breaking it up into smaller gatherings that are spread all over is to, is to make it available for everyone, to make it accessible for everyone. And so you are um, officially and very purposefully invited uh, to attend this one day. It's a Saturday, and uh, you'll see in the Connect email, you'll have seen that there is a little outline of the schedule. But basically, in the morning, there will be a worship service followed by a short, uh, proper annual meeting. It's, it'll be like 45 minutes. Uh, that'll be online with all the other um, provinces uh, zooming in together. And uh, that, that'll take place right after worship. Then uh, we will eat together. There's going to be a lovely lunch. And uh, then we will um, go into a learning session. Yesterday, we, uh, our church hosted a workshop on listening with Krista Dawn Kimsey. Um, it was well attended and, and really, really enjoyed by just such a great uh, circle of people. Krista Dawn is coming back to offer another seminar, a workshop that afternoon uh, on May 4th. Uh, different topics, similar approach. And then uh, we will worship again in the afternoon. And everything, uh, the day will be over around 4 p.m. So put it on your calendars. We would love for, you, for everyone um, that's part of our church community to participate. And um, even if you are busy for part of the day, come for the part that you can and um, enjoy getting to meet our relatives <laughs> uh, from across the province. So let's sing together and uh, be heading out. <laughs> sing one more. I invite you to stand and um, you receive this blessing today. Also, I invite you to sing it to one another. Um, let's sing this.
and their children, and their children. May his presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you. He is with you, he is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, he is for you. emotions, all the layers, all the complexities, go knowing that God is for you, that God goes with you, behind you, beneath you, before you, within you. You are a beloved child of God. Amen. Amen.